Welcome to the Mary Lewis Academy Virtual College Fair. Thank you for joining us. A few housekeeping announcements before we get started. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. Your camera and microphone are off so the panelists cannot see or hear you. Uh, and this is just one of many sessions happening tonight, so be sure to sign up for additional sessions. The presentation is being recorded and will be available within a week on the same website where you registered. And now I'd like to turn it over to our presenters. Uh, and first will be uh, Johnson and Wales University. Linda, I believe you're muted. I see you. I'm sorry, thank you. <laughs> Okay, I'll start again. So my name is Lynn Crane. I'm an admissions representative for Johnson and Wales University. Um, my territory is Nassau, Suffolk and Queens. So today I'm just going to uh, go over a little about Johnson and Wales. Um, we only have six minutes. So I'm also gonna put in the chat after uh, my contact information and some great links that are resources um, that students can use. So we have two locations. We're in Providence, Rhode Island and Charlotte, North Carolina. Our Providence campus is about 6,700 students and our Charlotte campus is about 1,500 students. And these are some things that make Johnson & Wales different. Um, our class size, um, experiential education, our faculty and jumping right into your major. So our class size is small. Um, the student to faculty ratio is 18 to one. We do not have any lecture halls at all. Um, our largest class size is about 30 students. So the professors really know the students. Um, students work many times in group settings. Uh, so the students are able to apply the information that they're learning right away. We also have a um, lot of learning labs. Um, these allow uh, flex space and students can, once again, when they're in the classroom, they're able to apply the information immediately. Um, students also can jump right into their major. Uh, we have what's called an upside down curriculum. So students are actually in their major right away. Um, starting freshman year, they'll be uh, in their major classes and they'll have those major classes throughout their four years. So many of our um, programs, our majors, um, allow students to turn their passion into a career. A great example of this would be culinary. We offer, offer um, a great culinary program, uh, but we have over 80 undergraduate and graduate majors. And that link also will be in the chat so you can see all the majors that we do offer. And these are some of the programs, uh, areas of study. So they range from art and design, culinary, education, engineering, finance, uh, health and wellness. We have a graduate uh, PA program, um, hospitality. We have a, a law program with Roger Williams University that students are able to do their undergrad and their law degree um, in that program. Marketing, we have a very strong business program and STEM and STEAM. So our numbers uh, do not lie. 90, over 97% of our students will actually um, be able to get a job in the area that they they've received their degree in. Um, so we have a very strong um, success rate in that area. Uh, we have over last year, 1500 internships in 46 states and 33 countries. Um, even this year, um, we are still having our students doing internships. Uh, internships have been always a huge part of the Johnson & Wales experience for our students. And um, over 71% of our students will actually receive uh, jobs from a paid internship. Our study abroad program um, is not obviously uh, right now. Um, students aren't able to do that, but they will be able to start doing the study abroad program as soon as it's safe to do so. And our study abroad office is still open to students so they can pre-plan. Um, but we have over 80 study abroad programs in 40 different countries. So that is also a great experience that our students can take advantage of. Students at Johnson Wells are very, very involved. We have over 150 clubs and organizations at the university. Um, so there is something for everyone. And we definitely, our students, um, they love being involved in the campus, getting to uh, know other students. And we have great fairs um, every year that will highlight all of these clubs and organizations uh, that the students can join. 
We are also division three in athletics. Um, and here is a list of all of the uh, sports that we offer. So we're just gonna talk, um, we're gonna talk briefly about affording a Johnson Wells education. Uh, we have merit-based scholarships, national student organization scholarships, outside scholarships, and we use the FAFSA, the free application for federal student aid. So over 90% of our students uh, receive financial aid at Johnson Wales. We really try to make it as affordable as possible. And visiting the university, we have so many great ways to visit. Uh, we are doing in-person tours, so you can certainly sign up for those, and that link will also be in the chat. We also are doing a lot of virtual opportunities too. Uh, we're having college nights. Students can sit in on a class um, at the university for their particular major. And all of these different programs are highlighted right on the website. And this is the application process. I'm just gonna go over this quickly too. Um, so we are on the Common App. Students can also use a Johnson Wales online application. Um, we also, students may see a paper application, which a very few students use, but we still do offer it. Um, what we do require is that the student sends the official or unofficial transcript. And we are an SAT, ACT optional school. We do not require the SAT or ACT. Um, a personal statement and essay and recommendation letters are also optional, but most of our students will submit those. We do have an early action deadline of November 1 of the student senior year, and our regular admissions deadline is March 1st. Uh, we definitely do a holistic application review. We're looking at each student individually. Um, so when a student applies to Johnson Wells, we're really looking at the school that they attend, um, the classes that are offered to them, and we take everything into consideration. We do also take both AP and IB class credits. And this is a uh, application on our Johnson & Wales website. And we do not prefer one application over another either. Some schools do, um, we do not. Students can apply on the Common App or the JWU application. And these are just some great uh, places that students can learn more about the university, uh, Facebook, Snapchat, Twitter, Instagram, and you can see everything that's going on and that's offered to our students. Um, so please reach out to me if you have any questions after today. I'd be more than happy um, to meet um, with the parents and the students. Um, I always do, I do a lot of uh, private Zooms and they can learn more about the university. Thank you so much. Excellent, thank you so much, Linda. Our next presentation will come from uh, the, Univer the University of Massachusetts Amherst. Awesome. Can you all see my screen with my PowerPoint? Yes. Awesome, thanks. You know how it is. I have like all the screens, and all. Um, but it's awesome to be with you all um, technologically, virtually tonight. I am Carolyn. I'm coming to you from Western Massachusetts, a couple hours north of you. I am your representative. Um, in kind of normal non-pandemic days, I'd be the one coming to your school person for this wonderful fair. So thanks for having us. And any questions that you might have about UMass Amherst, you can always reach out to me um, anytime and you'll get, sorry about, you'll hear my dog in the background. <laughs> that weird noise is not me, but you know how it is. So yeah, you'll see my uh, email address at the end of this for sure, or you can find us online <laughs> and online. Um, Yes, so UMass, what is it? You, if you haven't been up here, um, like I mentioned, we're just a couple hours north. It's beautiful up here. Um, rankings wise, we're happy to be ranked, you know, I think still 26, the, the public universities in the country. And we're happy with that. Um, where we are in Amherst, Massachusetts, we're in this wonderful five college consortium. Um, you might know Amherst College, Smith College, Mount Holy. Oak, Hampshire College, um, and we all do a lot together right in this area and we can take each other's classes and we can, you know, do clubs, you know, with each other's clubs beyond each, even each other's sports teams um, and do internships and work for professors and do research. So there's just like, not only are we a really big, awesome university, but we kind of have that five for the price of one sort of thing going on here. And I know, um, looking around, I know a few of my other colleagues have that in their areas too. Uh, we all have these unique kind of 
consortium, if as you call them. So academically at UMass, you'll find more than a hundred different mm -hmm. programs to remember once like, let's see if they I'm gonna see if um <laughs> if my dog can leave the room, but so more than 100 different programs that you can choose from. And I'll show you a little bit more about that on the next slide. Um, but just know that we are a big school, a big university, actually the most comprehensive university in New England. And so we have actually 24,000 undergraduate students and we have 6,000 more than that grad students here at UMass. So definitely you're entering a big community if you come here. Um, we love that. I'm actually a proud alum of UMass. I did my grad degree at the university and I came from a tiny college to this big place and I just loved it so much. So you're going to get a lot of attention here. You're going to have also still able to have small classes um, and a really small niche of your own, but then you have the, the big university at the same time. So it's, it's a cool thing. Um, yes, more than 300 clubs, we call them registered student organizations. I know I said with the five college thing, you can do even more than those 300 clubs. But just know there's a lot here. But my favorite statistic, some of you know this already, is we're ranked number one in the whole country for food on campus. Five years running. Yes, even during the pandemic, that food is um, amazing. So when you can, come check it out. See what you think. I love that about UMass so much, it's so good. Um, and I used to live in New York, so you know we know good food and <laughs> it's really good to come to a place where there is really good food. So academically, I know I said that we have a ton of majors for you, but being a big university, you know, research one, all that, you're gonna probably be looking at like, okay, well, what do you wanna do and do we have that? So we're actually broken into 10 smaller colleges at UMass within the bigger university. So whether you wanna do something related to education or in engineering or in computer science or in the humanities and the fine arts, you know, basically the liberal arts school on campus where you can do performing arts, studio arts, any of the languages, so many things in that school, the natural sciences where you'll find psychology to neuroscience to biology to pre-med to everything in the natural sciences we have our own college of nursing um, we have the college of social and behavioral sciences so if you're looking to go let's say pre-law or study econ or journalism so many more to name there but that's another school on campus and then we have a fully accredited school of public health and health sciences so beyond nursing, right? If you would like to um, work towards, you know, let's say kinesiology is one of my favorites, the science of movement, right? Um, or um, like working towards becoming a PT, or I mean, there's just so many. Again, I can't even list them all, but know that we have that. And we have our very famous school of business, the Eisenberg School of Management, where you'll find all of our business related majors. Um, and we also have our internationally renowned Stockbridge School of Agriculture. So there's some really cool hands-on programs within that, like um, our sort of sustainable foods and farming program is one of my personal favorites. If you're into golfing, there's an amazing turf grass management program. So some, just so many different degrees that you can do at a place like UMass. And then financially, I know we'll all like speak a little bit to, you know, kind of like again, wanting you to have an affordable education for your family, wherever you choose to be. And so for us, a state school out of state for New Yorkers, um, the price tag is good, but you are gonna be seeing the difference between like the in-state tuition, which you see at SUNY and stuff, and then the out-of-state tuition, which you see at places like you know, UMass and stuff. And so um, we have a lot of merit money scholarships that we love to give to our New Yorkers to bring that down to more comparable to in-state prices, but know that, um, yeah, that, that you'll be doing that cost comparison as you put your list together. And I think that's it for now. Am I on time? Perfect, thank you so much. <laughs> we will move on to our next presentation from uh, Worcester Polytechnic, uh, sorry, I can't talk tonight, Worcester Polytechnic Institute. Take you it away, Claudia. Thank you. <laughs> 
Hi, everyone. Um, welcome. My name is Claudia Aviles. I'm an assistant director of admissions here at WPI. Um, and uh, my pronouns are she, her, hers. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen here with you all to give you an introduction on the university. So WPI is a medium-sized university with an undergraduate focus. Um, just to give my folks in New York City a reference, so Worcester is located about three hours away from New York City. Um, and in terms of the size of the university, about 2007, 2,700 undergraduates. Um, and to kind of break that down a little bit further, um, about 40% of our students identify as women, 14% um, of our students identify as students of color, and then about 9% of our students at the undergraduate level identify as international students. Um, WPI does deliver a STEM focused education. Um, so 95% of our graduates graduate with a STEM related degree. We offer a little over 50 different degrees, um, everything from mechanical um, engineering. Engineering is the most popular program. We have 12 different types. Um, so aerospace, mechanical, robotics, and then we have um, computer science, which is the second most popular um, program currently. Um, and then we do have a number of students who will major in the science and math field. So major is like biochemistry, physics, math. Um, these are op all options for students as well. Each year, about 20% of our incoming class does enroll as undecided. Um, so they may be interested in studying something in the STEM field, but they may not know exactly what that is yet. That's okay. When you are um, admitted to WPI, we admit you on the belief that you'd find success in any one of our STEM programs. So you have that freedom and flexibility to try out um, different areas of STEM that you think might be of interest to you. Um, about one in 10 students will double major, about one in three students will add a minor to their principal course of study. And then we also have a dual degree bachelor's master's program where students can graduate in four or five years with both their bachelor's and master's degree. It does require a lot of planning and it is really difficult. Um, so it might not be for everyone, but definitely for the student who knows that they wanna do that, um, you can talk to your faculty advisor about it as early as your first year on campus. We also have a 95% retention rate from a student's first year to their sophomore year. And we're definitely really proud of that here at the university. Um, in terms of some sort of distinguishing factors about WPI, um, some things that I think it's important for students to know, we do operate on a quarter system. Um, so we have our academic calendar split into four quarters. Each quarter is um, about seven weeks long or exactly seven weeks long and students take three classes in each of those seven weeks. So classes typically start in late August and end in early May. Um, after each term is over, you do get a break. Um, so between A and B term, you get a 10 day break. Between B and C, you get a month long break. And then between C and D term, you get another 10 day break. We do also have an optional E term for any students who may wanna take courses over the summer. That's also an option. Um, another factor that's pretty different about um, WPI is the way we have grades. So we have a non-punitive grading policy. Um, students can receive an A, B, C, or an NR. Um, the NR stands for no record. If you don't receive an A, B, or C in one of your courses, um, you would get an NR. Um, this does not affect your GPA. It also does not appear on your transcript. It's as if you never took the course. And this is really to create a culture where students feel feel comfortable challenging themselves and taking a course maybe outside of the area of comfort or maybe even taking an upper level course without the fear of, oh no, this is gonna negatively impact me and my GPA. So definitely wanting to give that, that room for students to, to explore different areas. Um, we also have a flexible curriculum. Um, WPI does not have any prerequisites for upper level courses. We have something called recommended backgrounds. So if you wanted to go ahead and jump in to take Calculus 3, you can go ahead and do that. If you felt comfortable and knew Calc 1 and Calc 2, you can go ahead and challenge yourself in that way. Um, and then you do have support from faculty advisors in your major who would help guide you on which courses you would need to be taking to fulfill the requirements of your major. 
Um, and then another really big component um, about WPI's curriculum is that we're project based. So almost all of your classes at the university will have some sort of project component. Um, and we have four big projects that students will do every year. The first one, the Great Problem Seminar is optional. The other ones are mandatory. Um, the GPS Great Problem Seminar is um, an introduction to project based learning. The first term you're learning all about a global problem. And in the second term, you're coming up with a project um, that will focus focus on solving that problem on a smaller scale with the team of people. So a quick introduction to what project-based learning is. Um, and then students will typically in their sophomore year complete their humanities and arts requirement. So at WPI, in order to create well-rounded engineers, scientists, mathematicians, um, students are required to take six courses in an area of humanities and arts that interest them. That can be writing, English, history. Um, you can study a different language, um, but you're at, required to do at least six. And this is to make sure that you're someone who's well-rounded in STEM and can see that um, intersection between STEM and humanities and arts. And then for our two um, cornerstone projects, the IQP and MQP project, the IQP is one that students will typically do in their junior year. It's interdisciplinary in the sense that you're going to be working with students from um, different uh, academic backgrounds, and you're solving a social-based problem using your STEM skill set. It's also the opportunity that our students have to go abroad in their junior year for a term, um, and I have a, a PowerPoint to kind of show more about that. Wow, those six minutes came up really quickly. Um, the MQP is the senior year capstone, which students will do to kind of show what they've learned in their major, and that takes up the entire senior year. These are our global project centers. We have a little over um, 50, um, and that will continue once it's safe to travel again due to COVID. Students are still working with their uh, pro sponsors, but not able to travel to these different locations. So I kind of gave you a quick overview on our academic program. I'm going to pass it over to Matt because I think we're going to shift to another school here. Excellent. Thank you so much, WPI. Um, and just a reminder to the audience, if you have questions for any of our institutions, please do put them in the Q&A um, and direct them at a specific institution if they are uh, for just one institution. Our next presentation will be from Quinnipiac University. Thanks, Matt. Um, good evening, everyone. Uh, first of all, my apologies for not being on camera. Um, I'm covering this evening, and so therefore, um, I don't have my work laptop, and so what have you. We're going to just jump right into it. Um, my name is Brandon Woods. I'm Assistant Director for uh, Undergraduate Admissions at Quinnipiac University. I'm excited to be with you here at Mary Lewis. I happen to be from Brooklyn, and I remember spending time at Mary Lewis um, going to basketball games when I was in high school. I went to Bishop Ford High School um, many years ago, but anyway. Um, we'll talk a little bit about Quinnipiac University. Um, we're located in Hamden, Connecticut. That's about two hours north of New York City. Um, Hamden is a suburban area, um, so it's, it's not like, um, you know, being in, a, in the dead side of the city, but I think it's pretty similar to depending on where you are in Queens, uh, where you live in Queens. So we have three different lo uh, locations, our Mount Carmel campus, our York Hill campus, and our North Haven campus, and so we'll get into that. Um, the Mount Carmel campus is the main campus. That's where you'll live as a first and second year student. That's where most of the academic buildings are. There's also a student center, a uh, fully um, service and staff library, and an athletic and recreation center on the Mount Carmel campus. Um, other things that are not mentioned on this slide, there's a podcast studio for communication. Um, there are uh, engineering labs and, and, and chemistry labs and biology labs and things of that nature um, and, and various buildings on the Mount Carmel campus as well. Um, the, the second one is the North Haven campus, just a few minutes away. It's predominantly for students in our School of Law, School of Education, um, the School of Medicine, and Nursing and Health Sciences. We have state-of-the-art facilities on this North Haven campus. There are um, simulation labs. There are labs for occupational therapy um, and, and physical therapy and things. And, and the best thing about it, I think, is that um, all of these students in these different disciplines are working and learning next to each other and, and getting to um, understand what it is to collaborate in the medical field. Um, we also have a campus that's fully residential just for our upperclassmen. Um, that's for juniors and seniors, and it has a uh, athletic center there, a uh, fitness center and all of those good things. And it has a student, its own student center, which has its own cafeteria, um, activity rooms and things of that nature as well. 
uh, we're a, a medium sized institution, um, about 10,000 students overall, 7,000 graduate. Our average class size is about 20, 25 students, give or take, and our student faculty ratio is 16 to 1. So the idea here is that you'll definitely be in a uh, intimate class setting. You'll get to know your professors and they'll get to know you. There are opportunities for you to connect with uh, professors to do research and to volunteer to get extra experience. Um, one of the biggest components in our education system is the idea of experiential learning. And so students will do um, a ton of research, a ton of um, internships or things of that nature um, by the time that they graduate. Students will often uh, ask, you know, what can I do outside of the classroom? Uh, there are a hundred some odd, you know, organizations and clubs that you can become a part of. Um, those range from, you know, clubs that do random acts of kindness to um, service organizations, Greek life for those of fraternities and sororities. Um, there are also um, different athletic outlets. We are a Division One school, so we have 21 Division One athletic programs. And there are also club and intramural sports that match just about every sport that we have and some extras there. So you'll never, um, you know, run out of things to do. Um, these clubs and these organizations are also putting on events for you to, um, you know, absorb your time on campus to learn different things and to interact with students. Um, there are a ton of uh, service opportunities within the, the local community. You can also study abroad. Um, you can do an internship with certain programs where you are studying in a different part of um, the country uh, for, for a semester or a portion of the semester. We have QU in DC for political science majors. We have QU in LA for communication. Um, so there are options for you to, 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 to get out there and get a lot of experience both in Connecticut and in the country and in the world. Um, we're a liberal arts university, so there are a ton of different options for you to choose from as far as um, majors and minors and programs and things. One of the things that I really want to highlight are our dual degree programs. Uh, we have a number of those for you to choose from. The accelerated programs are three plus ones, which means that you're coming in, um, you're graduating in four years with a master's degree. And we also have a number of four plus one programs, meaning that at some point during your undergraduate tenure, you can decide that you want to get your master's and start to pick up the pace a little bit and even take master's classes in your senior year um, and graduate in five years with a master's degree. There are some other programs that have extended um, dual degree programs that are beyond five years as well. Uh, we have a College of Arts and Sciences, Business, Education, Communications, et cetera, you see the list there. Um, there are a number of options for, um, for, for majors. I think one of our most popular majors, or, or some of our most popular rather, political science, uh, criminal justice for sure. Um, on the health sciences, we have physician's assistant, we have a, a, a school of medicine, and we have a law school as well. Uh, so there, there are a lot of, again, options for you to choose from. Or, um, as far as as far as our, the majors are concerned, and these are just some examples of employers that we've had in the last few years um, for students doing internships or for, for getting their jobs when they when they graduate from school. Um, a statistic that I want to highlight to you: um, ninety-five some percent of students graduate with um, uh, higher education goals, with with or or um, the idea that they want to go into graduate school or they graduate with a job. Um, this is a, a depiction of our admission deadline. An application process. Uh, we would recommend that you submit your, your uh, letters of recommendation for your, for your application. We do require um, a, a high school transcript, excuse me, we also require the letters of recommendation. We want to submit two or three of those, and uh, we're, we're test optional for most programs this year. The exceptions um, are physician's assistant, and our uh, we have a three plus three law program. Um, if there are questions, feel free to reach out, folks. Um, I'm not the rep for, for Queens. I'm actually the person for Long Island, but I'll drop my information in chat as well. Excellent. Thank you so much, Quinnipiac. Uh, and our next presentation is from uh, the University of Connecticut. And again, please remember to put your questions in the Q&A for any of our presenters this evening. All right, good evening, everybody. Um, thank you for taking some time out of your day to learn a little bit more about what UConn has to offer. My name is Brian Feener. I am a first year admissions counselor at UConn, representing um, all of Long Island, as well as the eastern part of Queens, um, the northeastern part, and then the, uh, the southern part of the borough as well. Um, so I'm just gonna share my screen with you guys um, so that you can see that. Um, so I'm just gonna talk a little bit first um, some basic facts about the university. Um, we have about 24,000 students across all five of our campuses. And 
I'll talk more about our campuses in just a second. Um, a common misconception with um, students attending our regional campus, our region, one of our regional campuses, is that it's not a UConn degree. So I think that shouldn't have um, gone forward automatically. Um, but it is a UConn degree regardless of what campus you attend. Um, so that is a question that we do get a lot. Our main campus is located in stores in the northeastern part of the state. About 19,000 students attend um, attend our stores campus. The majority of our students do attend classes and live on campus in stores. Um, our regional campuses are located in Hartford, Waterbury, Avery Point, and, and um, Stanford. Our regional campuses do tend to be geared a little bit more toward commuting students because Stanford is our only regional campus with on-campus housing. Um, the rest of our campuses do not offer on-campus housing. Um, so that is why the majority of our students do um, live on campus and attend classes at our store at our main campus in stores. Um, several academic programs can, however, be fit, started and finished at one of our regional campuses. Any student can apply to one or more of our regional campuses as part of their application to the university. Um, a little bit about our academic programs. We have over 115 undergraduate majors um, for students to choose from over 120 undergraduate minors and concentrations across 10 different schools and colleges. Some of our most, um, our largest and most popular majors are the biological sciences and psychology. Um, and some of our more competitive programs are in engineering, fine arts, nursing, and business. Um, the separate requirement for engineering and nursing is that chemistry and physics must be taken in high school. Those have to be listed as either in progress or completed credits on your high school transcript at the time of your application in order for you to be considered for, one, for admission into one of those programs. And just a brief uh, snapshot of the remainder of our programs. Um, you can see we offer a graduate school of education. Um, so for that program, you will apply to the university as a pre-teaching major, and then you'll apply directly into the school of education at the end of your sophomore year for the beginning of your junior year. Our class sizes, we do try to keep classes small as best as possible. Um, we have a 16 to one student faculty ratio and the majority of our uh, classes at our main campus and stores do enroll fewer than 30 students to, to, to create um, those collaborative learning environments and um, enable students to create those relationships with their professors as well as their fellow peers in each of their classes. Sorry about the presentation. I didn't realize that it was um, automatically advancing between slides. So. My apologies for that. A um, couple of unique programs that we offer. Um, I mentioned the selective programs in those four schools listed there. For our special programs in law, medicine, dental medicine, and education, um, those are all honors programs that you can apply to as part of your application to the university. There is a separate review process. For our special programs in dental medicine, medicine, and law, if you complete the requirements for each program, um, which include attending special seminars, special lectures, um, and working with a faculty advisor from those programs, and you complete those requirements, you complete the requirements for your chosen academic major as well, you're guaranteed admission to that respective professional school after four years of undergraduate work. So you, you would be guaranteed admission into our medical school, our dental school, or our law school, depending on which program that you enter. Um, over 700 companies actively recruit on our campus every year, and they conduct over 1,100 on-campus interviews. So it's a great way for students to practice their interview skills, um, connect with some of the companies that they might want to pursue internships or employment with post-graduation. Um, our Center for Career Development handles all of those opportunities throughout the year, as well as our fall and spring career fairs for students to engage with um, different companies and corporations. Our students complete more than 1.3 million hours of community service every year um, throughout Connecticut, throughout the country. You can do uh, community service as part of a study abroad program as well. And we have over 135 study abroad programs across uh, 65 countries worldwide. And students can begin studying abroad as early as the second semester of their first year. Um, a little bit about the opportunities we have outside the classroom. We have over 700 clubs and organizations for students to choose from. Um, 24 division one sports teams. You might've heard a, a thing or two about our men's and women's basketball teams. 23 national championships um, across all of our Division I teams. We just re-entered the Big East this year, um, which is really exciting. Um, it's provided a lot of great competition um, despite the current circumstances. But when we do allow fans back in the stands for our athletic events, all home athletic events are free to all students to attend um, with their student ID. 
Um, we also offer several club and intramural teams for students to choose from. Um, and you can get involved with those organizations as early as your first year. Um, a little bit about the uh, application process. Letters of recommendation are optional. Test scores are now optional as well. You do not have to provide us with SAT or ACT scores. We do a holistic review process on all applications that we receive. Um, so despite the fact that we're test optional, we're still looking at everything that you submit to us, the rigor of your high school course load, um, any clubs and organizations that you've been involved with, personal background, personal circumstances, um, and additional factors as well. So we are still doing that holistic review process despite the fact that we have implemented that test optional policy. A little bit about the timeline. Um, financial aid uh, priority deadline is February 15th. We're sending out decisions beginning March 1st next week. Um, Priority application deadline is December 1st uh, for merit-based scholarship consideration. All students are given automatic consideration for merit-based scholarships um, as part of their application to the university. A little bit about um, diversity on campus. We are a very diverse campus. 44% of our current first year class identifies as a racial or ethnic minority. Um, so we're very proud of our diversity on campus. 14% um, international students in the class of 2024 as well. There is my contact information. Um, again, I represent Long Island and Eastern Queens. Um, so you can feel free to reach out to me. My email address is available on our admissions website as well. It's just admissions.uconn.edu. Excellent, thank you so much, UConn. Um, so that, that does conclude our presentations. Unfortunately, um, UMass uh, Lowell was, was scheduled to be with us this evening, but they were unable to make it. So um, I do apologize for that, but I'm sure you can find their contact information on their website. Uh, I do have some uh, question or two for all of our college reps um, to kick things off here. Uh, I'm gonna share my screen. Uh, and so we'll, we'll, I'll ask all of our reps to answer in the order that they presented, uh, but what piece of advice would you give someone going through the college search process? So we'll start back with Johnson and Wales. Hi, so um, the Best advice I would say is time. You really want to start the process uh, as early as you can. Um, looking at the schools online, doing virtual tours online, and then figuring out what schools are the best fit for you, which schools have your programs that you're looking for. Um, maybe you and your family have decided you can only go within a three or four hour radius um, using that information and just taking it all in, looking everything up, seeing what kind of scholarship packages that they're giving out. Um, but definitely time is the most important thing. The more time that you give yourself, you'll be able to look at multiple schools. You won't be pressured to be looking quickly and you'll be able to you know, start the process online and hopefully be able to visit schools um, soon. A lot of schools are starting to do visits. Um, and then you can you know, really uh, be able to take your list and um, you know, take it to your top five uh, by just say your senior year. So then you kind of have an idea of um, what schools that you are really focusing on. Good points, Linda. And um, add to that, I one of my experiences with Mary Lewis is how awesome your college counselors are. And you're really lucky to be at a school where you have good counselors and good like counseling and attention and people to help you through this, especially in these times where there's just so much to do and so many changes and to the way, you know, that you might have, for the parents, the way you might have experienced it, or if, you know, if your child is the first in the family to go to college, there's just so much. And it's, it's almost like learning another language to apply for college and for financial aid and um, and just coming up with that list, like Linda was saying, it's it's a lot um, right now. So I think mm -hmm. um, do take the time to talk to your counselor and sort of build a relationship with them and trust them um, and think critically about what they tell you and um, kind of follow that checklist. I love checklists, you know, for me, I'm like, okay, like let's go through the timeline and they have some of those they'll give you. So I think, yeah, I think, boiling it down like my my biggest advice is to really utilize your college counselor and try to enjoy it because it'll be over so fast 
Yeah, so I would second everything that has been said already, but also add, um, we, every high school has counselors, and I think most folks on this call probably are assigned to your high school, and so feel free to utilize us as a resource. Um, we're here for you as well, and if you have any questions, I remember going through my process and thinking, my counselor is too busy. They probably have so many things that's going on, but we actually really want to connect with you. Um, there are even though we're in COVID right now and many colleges maybe don't have opportunities for you to visit in person, there's still so many programs going on online for you to learn about the institution. So I would definitely say, feel free to reach out to the counselor. Most, I think schools will publish it on their website, but it's always great to kind of hear um, just person to person what's available. So definitely take advantage of us as, as admissions counselors um, and being um, support for you all during this process. And then I would also say, try to find opportunities to connect with current students as well to kind of help you um, see what schools are a good fit. I think current students um, definitely have a good pulse on what's what campus is like. So definitely take advantage of opportunities to chat with current students at various institutions you're thinking about applying to. Everyone stole all my good answers, um, but my my general my general advice for for students is to visit um, campus. I I have a very strong hope that we're going to go back to a place where we can you know do things the way that we're used to in the near future. And if that's the case, um, my real advice is to visit multiple times. If you are very interested in a school, check it out in the summer. Check it out in the winter. See how you feel. Like breathe the air. Um, that's like the best advice that I could ever give. If you like have a, a, a number one school or a couple top three, um, check it out a couple different times in different places. Talk to different students, um, attend some different events, get some different you know like perspectives, um, so that you can have a really uh, a sound foundation to make your decision on. Yeah, I would definitely echo everything that everyone's already said. Um, I would say very simply, no research is too much research. Um, definitely, uh, you know, pick those top, uh, top schools, top one, two, three, four schools. Um, I know when I was going to college, when I was deciding between one or two schools, I visit, I mean, granted, they were very close to my house, but I visited each school maybe five, six times just to get a feel for the campus, see if I can picture myself there. Um, and while it might be difficult to do something like that at this point, given the current circumstances, um, definitely take advantage of those virtual experiences. Uh, universities, colleges and universities are doing a great job right now engaging with their prospective students, with their applicants um, through information sessions, virtual tours, connecting with current students um, and things like that. So definitely get involved with those. Attend the same information session multiple times. You might learn something new each time. Um, so definitely no research is too much research. Engage as much as possible with the schools that you're interested in and reach out to the counselors that represent your area, each one of us um uh and reach out to us ask questions um we really at least at uconn we look fondly upon that um upon students reaching out because it really shows that they're interested in engaging in one-on-one -on -one video chats with us um during this time so definitely engage as much as possible and no research is too much research when it comes to the college search process thank you so much to all of our uh college and university representatives. Um, we are just about out of time. Um, so if there's any more uh, questions, please put them in the Q&A um, and our reps will, will get a copy of these after the fair is over and uh, we'll try to follow up with you. But um, I wanna thank our speakers and our presenters this evening and our attendees. Um, when the Zoom window closes, there's a quick four question survey that will appear and we do value your feedback please do sign up for um, more sessions happening this evening and a recording of this session will be available in about a week. So again, thank you all very much. And uh, this concludes uh, this session of the College Fair. Have a great evening.